How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and today I want to walk you through how to get a tub set into place with a DIY bathroom remodel I'm doing. I'll be using the Delta Classic 400 series which is an acrylic tub and multi-piece surround combo. I've used it on multiple renovation projects in the past and overall I've been very satisfied with the product. Like many things, the success of the final product is mostly in the prep work looking at your subfloor, looking at your walls, and getting a plan of attack so when you set the tub in place, everything is level, secure, and solid. So let's jump into it, and I'll show you how to assess the subfloor and walls to make sure you get that prep work done correctly. So all the demo's already been done. Removed the old fiberglass surround, removed all the drywall that I needed to make sure I could get this tub and the corresponding surround panels in place. And also, I removed the old drain line, knowing I was gonna reconfigure that and the water lines cut the copper back put some half inch shark bite caps on which are super handy for these type of projects so you can turn the water onto the house but then cap those lines and then remove them and reuse those caps later on as i'm going to take that copper and convert it to packs going up to my new mixing valve so now i'm set up to get this tub in place and to dry fit it to see what adjustments I need. But first, you just wanna take basic measurements, especially if you haven't had your tub selected yet. So I'm just confirming that I have 60 inches of clearance so the tub will go into place, which I do. You also wanna confirm, are you left hand drain like this one or right hand drain? You don't wanna go pick up your tub, get to your house and figure out that it's on the wrong side. That makes for an extra trip and a longer project. Also 32 inches, I know from the back wall surface to the edge of the screwing flange is 32 inches. So I have clearance and the nice thing is too, I have studs in the wall that I'll be able to screw right into to secure uh, this side at least of the tub. Now on the other side I have clearance, but I'm gonna need to put sister in a small stud so I'll have a surface to screw into. So I'll show you how to do that. And then 19 inches is the top of the screw flange that goes around the tub. So I made a few marks on these studs because now I wanna show you how to check the level of the subfloor and check your walls to make sure the studs are plumb and square prior to us dry fitting. If we have something way out, we're gonna to wanna to make that adjustment even before dry fitting because we know there's gonna be a big issue. So with the subfloor, I'm gonna take a four foot level and I'm gonna lay that on the subfloor, making sure there's no debris that's holding up that level and check it side to side. Overall, my subfloor is looking very good. You can check multiple points, but side to side, I like what I'm seeing. So the bubble is right in the middle. Now front to back, again, making sure no debris is under the level. Front to back, I'm actually a little bit high on the back. So how I assess how far out I am, I know across this four foot, I can take this shim and I can just position that shim underneath the level until I get the level where I want it. Now, once the level's where I want it, I can mark on the shim and I know at that level on the shim thickness, so I'm one eighth of an inch off. So across that four foot, I am one eighth of an inch low on my drain side. Now that's right on the borderline. I'm still going to dry fit and I'm actually gonna go down in the crawl space, poke my head up through the hole for the plumbing access and see how the base on the acrylic tub, it has a honeycomb mesh for a base. See how that's sitting on the floor and what I don't wanna see is any gaps. If there's any gaps, what I would need to do is a bed of mortar to kind of build that up so I can get a level tub. But kind of right on the borderline and I'm gonna to need to dry fit to see how it's looking. So now for our walls, we wanna do checks with a square and that same four foot level. This is the wall that's on my drain side. I wanna take that level and go across as many studs as I can. And what I'd like to see is that all the studs are hitting the level. The level's not rocking back and forth like this where one of the studs is holding it out or that one of the studs doesn't have an air gap where it's offset into the wall. If that was the case, I would have to make some adjustments. And then we'll talk about those adjustments and what options you have in just one second. So once I've done that check, I also would like to put the level vertical 
on each one of these studs and check that the bubble is in the middle for to make sure they're plumb, to make sure they're perfectly up and down in the vertical direction. And overall, I like what I'm seeing on this wall. So this wall is a great baseline for me. I like the positioning of this wall. It's plumb, all the studs are in the same plane. So now I'm gonna take my square and I'm gonna go to my 19 inch mark. That's my screw flange for the tub. I'm gonna connect up with three studs here and then place that on the back wall at this 19 inch mark. And I can see that these two studs here are gonna have a little bit of an issue. I have a gap back here. So either this stud is set back in or this stud is crowned out and I have a bit of an issue. Again, I can take that shim and I can quantify that issue by sticking the shim down where it hits. And then again, this is gonna be a little bit less than an eighth of an inch just going off of the measurement we did on the subfloor. Not terrible, but something I'm gonna to have to at least shim out or make some small adjustments for. So what options do you have when you need to make adjustments? I'll take this small two by four as an example. If you had something to set in and you need to get your stud surface out, you can sister in a new stud that usually would go the length of your wall, but you would get this outside face of this new stud where you want it, and then you would attach it to your existing stud and that gives you your new surface that is now in the position that you want it. Alternatively, if you have a smaller gap, you can get a furring strip. Now I wouldn't buy these. What I usually do, uh, especially if I'm at the job site, I just have my circular saw. I actually take a set of vice grips. I put those on the guard for the circular saw at the dimension I want. And then I rip down a furring strip. For instance, this one's set at about a quarter of an inch. And this might be what I'm gonna need here for the corner piece where then I would just take some brad nails, brad nail that in place, and now my outside surface is where I want it by use of the furring strip. Now, if you have a very small gap, then you might be just using some simple shims, uh, like a plastic shim like this. So you have a few different options depending on how your wall surfaces are and how far out they are. But overall, my walls are pretty good. I'm gonna have to make some small adjustments, but I do wanna at least dry fit the tub to get a better assessment and see how the tub's sitting in in terms of level side to side and front to back. But for the Delta Classic 400 series, there is one step you need to do before dry fitting. So let's jump out and do that step and then dry fit our tub. What I wanna do is install what's called the apron support. So that's just gonna connect this base structure to this flexible apron. Without it, the apron really has no structure. So I wanna let the adhesive set up to make sure it's ready to go before dry fitting in place. Then I'm just gonna lay down a generous bead of adhesive to the front edge here of the support. Then once I have that, go ahead and pull the apron out. Set it in place. Tap it down on both sides. And then press it down a little bit on that front edge. And what I wanna make sure is that the support itself is is not going to be lower than the bottom of the apron once we flip it over. I don't want the support to be holding the tub up. I want that bottom of the white apron to actually be against the floor. Leave a little weight on that. Then while that sets up, I'm just gonna tape it in place. And it should be noted, there is a plastic protective layer that you're obviously gonna to want to make sure you remove from the backside so that he said is contacting the actual apron and not just that protective layer. So now I'll just let that set up for about a half an hour. I'm gonna leave a little bit of weight with that hammer on it just to keep it in place as well. And then for the back wall, I'm just going to place a two by four that's the length of the screw flange. So then we'll have something to actually attach the tub to. So 
So now I'll take my time and set the tub in place. I'll start by positioning the back and kind of lowering the front drain side in. Now be careful, right? We just set that support so the apron you want to be a little bit careful with so you don't pop that support off. Like here, the front side apron is getting caught on my drywall. So I'll have to adjust it a little bit to make sure the tub can completely set in place. And now you probably want to step inside the tub so you can feel it out, feel the base. But there is, on the original box, there's a protective insert. So you can cut that out, set it in place if you're going to keep your shoes on, or just walk around with socks so you don't damage the finish. So now with the tub in place, and make sure you it's not hanging up on anything, make sure it's in its final destination. Because we're going to want to, again, check for level. I go to the top of that flange opposed to the surface itself, just in case the design of the tub has a small slope to it to drain water. And I'm seeing the same. So the subfloor, one eighth of an inch, basically lower on the drain side is, is translating up to this rim as expected. And then I can go off side to side flange, just confirming that it's looking good, again, as expected, because the side to side was, was level for our subfloor. Now, as expected, I have a small gap really just at this stud here where I most likely will use a shim. And then on that corner stud, it ends up being about 3 16 of an inch. But other than that, all my other studs are lining up and it's looking good. What I want to do is I'm gonna jump down the crawl space and see if we can get a look at that honeycomb base and if it's sitting on the subfloor. If it's not sitting on the subfloor, that is where we're probably gonna to have to do a bed of mortar to kind of build that up a little bit. Just checking to see if that base is sitting on the subfloor, which it is on that side. Take a look at the other side. That is encouraging. It looks like it's sitting right on the subfloor. So that looks good. All right, next up, we'll remove the tub again. I'm gonna make a little bit of adjustments to the wall, but first I wanna make up my drain and my overflow pipe by just setting it up in the room here because I did get a kit and you can see that link in the description. It just comes with the pieces and then you need to cut your PVC schedule 40 PVC pipe to length. So all I'm using to cut it to length is I'll just mark it here and then I'll just use a ratchet pipe cutter. Cut that off to length and then get each of the two pieces that I need and just dry fit that up. So line up the sanitary tee, making sure that the sanitary tee is positioned correctly where the drain flow will go down the pipe. And then fit in that last piece. And once I like everything dry fit, now I'll go to priming and gluing each of these connections. Remember when you prime and glue, you do wanna hold each of those connections for just 15 seconds or so because if you don't, the connection can kind of back out and that might equal a leak later on. Then I'll do the last connection here. And now that part of the project is completed. All right, so now we're gonna put the tub in for final install. I did take the overflow and drain pipe off so the tub will fit back in. And now you wanna do any of the adjustments to the stud. So whether you're sistering studs, you're gonna put furring strips in place like the one I need to put here. You need to get those in place prior to putting the tub back in so you're not taking it in and out. Now I'm just gonna use an 18 gauge brad nailer just to get this furring strip attached to the stud. Nothing too fancy, you just want it to be able to space out and then we're gonna sink the screws into the actual original studs for the secure hold of the tub. Okay, tub is in place and now I'm ready to secure it for the final install. Now to make sure everything's in place, I wanna do a final check with my level. Make sure everything is still the same prior to removing it. Yep, everything looks good. The way I'm gonna secure it to each stud is with an inch and a quarter deck screws with a torque bit. Deck screws will give me the hole that I'm looking for and they're also corrosion resistant. 
but because they're not pan head, right, they have that standard flare. Now to account for that, I'm going to use this little countersink bit. I have a little bit of the drill bit here that gives me my pilot hole through the acrylic flange, but then you have the countersink portion that's gonna give me a little bit of a countersink so that screw head sits flush with the flange as I don't want it to sit proud extended out where it would then my walls or tile or whatever I'm doing for my surround where there might be an issue with that screw head sticking out. You need a pilot hold on each one of your studs and then three on each of the flanges on both sides for the front. Now, if you wanna reference four tools like this, whether it's the power tools I'm using, this countersink bit, you can look down in the description, you'll see my Amazon store, which is all my recommendations across the different types of projects you'll be facing. Now that's no additional cost to you, but every time you do buy from that store, it does help out the channel, so that is greatly appreciated. So let's get this tub set in place and then the drain connected. So with the tub secure, now I wanna get my overflow and my drain connected up. Now I'm going to feed this back below the wall, get it in place, and then first get the drain set up. So before tightening my overflow, I wanna get the drain where I have my gasket. Now this is gonna be coming up from the bottom. Then you have the tub surface. And then we're really screwing it down here with this basket and then I'll have actually 100% silicone on the bottom side. I really like plumber's putty, but a lot of plumber's putty will stain the acrylic. So 100% silicone is what we're going here. I'll tighten this up first because this is the source of leaks if you don't do it right. So we'll get that tightened up and then we'll go ahead and put in our trim piece for the overflow. All right, so here is my old P-trap, and here is my new sanitary T coming down. So I need to get this all connected up so the drain with the P-trap is good to go. So what I'll do is I'll cut off my old pipe right here, put a coupling on, and then dry fit everything up with the new P-trap. I'll deburr that and now start to build things back up. So that's that new coupler going in, a long piece of 40, uh, schedule 40 PVC coming out of the sanitary T. Now I'm getting my measurement going into my new P-trap. Once I got that, then I cut it with that ratchet cutter again. And then I wanna get that measurement between the P-trap and the new coupler. Got that piece, now dry fit everything up. Now if everything looks good and I like it, now I'm gonna make a plan to start gluing. So we have several different joints that we need to glue here. And then the last joint that I'm gonna glue is that two sections of the P-trap. And that is because the old PVC going up is actually a vent line and it has a little play up and down. So I can leverage that to do my last joint, to glue my last joint and have some movement. So get the coupler, set here and remember hold these for about 10 or 15 seconds a little bit of a turn to make sure they don't back out and the glue sets up all right get everything and then we have that last joint in the p-trap so prime that glue it and then use that play to get everything set up and now we have our new drain and p-trap completed all right with my shoes off i just want to get a feel Sometimes these acrylic tugs will kind of creak and crack, but this one seems pretty darn solid. So overall, pretty happy with the project. 
So this one's completed, but don't forget, this is part of a much larger DIY bathroom remodel. For $1,500, I'm kind of redoing this entire classic late 80s, early 90s bathroom. And one of the best projects to spend your money to improve the value of your home and build the equity that you have in your home. So if you want to see the complete remodel from start to finish, check out this video right here, and it'll take you through all those different aspects of this bathroom remodel. So thanks for joining me on this video, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.